Hi guys, this is Dr. Afra, cosmetic physician and general practitioner, and I'm joining you today with another live chat with Dr. Amanda Ong, who is another cosmetic physician and a national trainer for thread lifts and cosmetic procedures. Uh, today we will be talking about some skincare um, details that skincare that we use for ourselves, things that we recommend for patients. I think when, when you've been in the business for as long as we have, you tend to pick up a few pearls of wisdom here and there and everywhere. And because we're so interested in treating the skin from the outside in, we, we do tend to learn a lot about it. As you are well aware, I work with Dr. Michael Rich, who is a dermatologist, and he obviously keeps training me and teaching me and educating me a lot about skincare as well. And Amanda has been in the business for a very long time, and she can tell us exactly how long. And she's, of course, had access to all of this information and tried a lot of things herself. And she'll be talking to us about which skincare products or actives she finds work for her and which she recommends more highly to her patients. So I'm just waiting for her to join me and then I'll start and then I'll invite her on and she, we can talk about it a little bit more. Um, this is not a very structured chat today. Usually I have a bunch of questions um, that I'll ask my guests, but today we thought we'd just have a really casual chat. So I don't have uh, any questions with me. Um, all of you who are watching and joining us live, please feel free to ask us questions. I'll just invite Amanda to join me. And she... Hi Amanda. My head oh, hi. Hello, how are you? Yeah, I'm, oh, my head's off too. You can do this, you can do this. <laughs> yeah, but this is this. Oh, you, you can just, how much you're gonna get cut off, right? Yeah, you don't know, and then whether your top or bottom it changes too. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Reposition my camera a bit. Yeah, that looks good. Okay. Now, so I've done a little bit of an introduction about you, but I thought Last time I read out this whole thing, but I think it, it, it's a little bit of when it comes from the person who's been doing it. So can you tell us a little bit about how long you've been in the um, cosmetic medicine business? What brought you to it and what, what has kept you here? Yeah, sure. Um, so I've been a cosmetic physician for 16 years. So I essentially finished um, my medical degree, uh, did my one, t one year of intern year and straight away jumped straight into cosmetic medicine. Um, my father was already doing uh, injectables and his specialty, as you know, is hair loss. So he already had a clinic set up for me to sort of go into. Um, so very early on, yeah, my father taught me a lot of what I do know uh, and still today as well. Um, he's always very ahead of the game with um, innovations and skincare and um, solutions for hair as well. So, um Yes, and he we back in the day we used to actually make a lot of skincare ourselves. So I, I do know what active ingredients look like in their raw form and all that sort of stuff. And um, in Hong Kong, uh, 2006, I actually developed a skin line back in 2006 called Rescue. And um, till today, there's a few products that patients would just get upset if I discontinued them. So we're not doing that range anymore, but the cleanser and the sunblock is still something that we continue to supply our patients even today, so which is nice. Um, yeah, and as you know, it's all about, I, I do mostly collagen stimulating injectables and thread lifting. So um, a lot of the products that we recommend at our clinic are really active products that basically are uh, aimed to do the same thing and that stimulate collagen in your skin and to restore it more to a youthful state. So yeah. So when you say that you played with some of these products, were you in the lab actually looking at them and touching them? Yes, that's right. So even mixing them together and stuff like that. Yeah. So even till today, we still do a bit of compounding for acne type products. Yeah. So. You at the moment, Amanda? What's that? What sort of products do you do at the moment? Oh, we still do acne, like products for acne, like more specialized for acne patients. So. Um, there's a few that we do ourselves, but we have since outsourced a lot of products in our skincare line. Yeah. So what are the actives in the acne range? Acne range? Um, well, see, I, I find with a lot of anti-aging and acne, obviously a lot of active ingredients do cross over. So your vitamin A is one of them that um, is beneficial for acne and also anti-aging. So 
if if one was to ask me what is one ingredient that you would choose across the board, it would be vitamin A. Um, and obviously, there's different types of vitamin A, and um, a lot on the market. So a lot of people get confused with the different types. Um, the ones that you buy over the counter probably are more um, gentler, maybe not so active because of the concentration. Um, however, you know, because I'm old school, I always had the opinion, the stronger, the better. So the, the most highest prescription grade of vitamin A is the best, but my, my thinking has changed recently. Um, I still think retinoic acid, which is the highest form of vitamin A, it, it is good for acne in the sense that because it does that peeling as a side effect, uh, usually severe acne would benefit from a bit of skin peeling because it actually helps with the scarring as well. Um, however, for anti-aging, my school of thought has changed. So I'm more of a retinoaldehyde fan. Is that much what you think as well? Um, look, I think that with the retinols and retinols, sorry, I keep adjusting my camera because it's toppling a little bit. Uh, with yep. the retinols and retinols, which are supposed to be the you know precursors as well as the gentler forms of uh, vitamin A, for, especially for those people who find that the retinoic acid can be really irritating, um, I, I don't personally find much of a difference, to be honest, with irritation. And this is completely personal and observational. Um, it's only from experiences based on what I've seen. Of course, a lot of studies show that retinol and retinol can be uh, much uh, gentler and a lot easier to build up to retinoic acid if people are finding that a lot more irritating. But I find if it builds slowly, even retinoic acid doesn't cause much irritation or inflammation. It's just the way you start. And it's just the way okay. you because I think you can overdo it with any compound, even mm -hmm. vitamin C, which is anti-inflammatory. But I think if you're, gonna, if you're going to overdo something, you'll overdo it with anything. Yeah. I'll tell you one thing that's interesting, because obviously, because I've been doing this for so many years, I have built myself up to retinoic acid. And I was using retinol and retinoic acid for quite a number of years. And funny enough, um, there was one day where um, I went to a Botox, um, oh, sorry, anti-wrinkle, uh, workshop <laughs> and I got my bunny lines injected so I was basically scrunching up my nose just every day to see when it, when it was going to kick in yep. and um, and then I realized that my skin was really crepey on sort of that active movement and I asked my dermal therapist and she said oh maybe because you're using such strong vitamin A it's probably chronically has irritated the, the surface of your skin even though I had got used to it um, so I did change to retinol aldehyde a few years ago and it actually doesn't happen anymore, that sort of crepey type appearance. And now I can spot it on my patients. So when they always ask me, you know, what do, what do you do about these lines? And they'll scrunch their face up and obviously it's not there at relaxation. I actually now say, you know, what form of vitamin A are you using? And they're all using the strong stuff, mm -hmm. the retinoic acid. So I, I think over time, you know, the side effects, they get used to the peeling and the redness. Um, but I do believe it, it does strip that very superficial layer of the skin. And I think it's the older patients that you see it more obviously. Um, and also a common complaint is that they go bright red, like at the gym, you know, like um, if they do, if they're in the sun for a little short period of time or they're doing a workout, they kind of go bright red. And I think that's the inflammatory side effect of vitamin A. Um, yeah, so I, I'm now crossed over to retinol aldehyde because it's gentler, but it's still doing the same thing once it's inside the skin. And is yeah. this for compounding, Amanda? Um, we've since sourced with a, with a lab um, these type of products and the range of vitamin A that we carry start off really low. So vitamin A is actually very beneficial for people with sort of sensitive and damaged skin. And as you said, not many people can tolerate vitamin A. But vitamin A has its benefits because it can rebuild and strengthen the skin in someone with sensitive skin. So I always say to people with sensitive skin, you just you don't sort of accept that you can't use stuff. Hmm. You know, you like you can't just sort of say, oh, I could, you know, every, anything I use irritates. I'm just going to use water. Like that's there's something not right there. So it's about rebuilding and strengthening the skin uh, with vitamin A. So there definitely is types of vitamin A that can be used for sensitive skin types that can actually strengthen their skin and build them up to stronger strengths as well. 
Um, so that's a pretty good point, and I'll tell you why. Because recently, one of my patients actually said the same thing to me. She said, "I'm finding the skin under my eyes is getting very、um, irritated and inflamed, and I've actually, I think, I've burnt a little bit of it." So what I generally tell patients, and I haven't personally tried retinal detox. I think that's a good point, and I might try、mm-hmm. that. But what I usually recommend is under the eyes. Don't put the retinoid cream straight on. Mix it with、yeah. something. Mix it with an eye cream that's moisturizing, or mix it with your regular night cream. It just lowers the strength a little bit, provides a bit more moisture. And for people with dry skin types、um, who don't have acne or oily skin, I usually tell them to to do that under the eyes anyway. And sometimes、mm. even the face if they have really dry skin. But if you go oily or acne-prone skin, then I'm happy for them to, you know, use that at the start because it will dry the skin out a little bit, and they'll、yeah. benefit a little bit from that. But I'll definitely give the retinal dehydrator a go. Yeah, you should. Yeah, definitely. Because,、um, yeah, as you said, the eye area and especially around the mouth, people tend to react a lot to stronger forms of vitamin A. And、um, I've actually had some older ladies that back in the day I put them on the strong stuff because all I wanted to do is get rid of their wrinkles. Um, and they all came back with these sort of what looked like more wrinkles around the eyes because of the irritation and the thinning of the skin.、Mm. Um, yeah, so you've definitely got to be careful. And、um, I always say, like, if you can't use vitamin A continuously, meaning you've got to start and stop because of the side effects, you're not actually reaping the benefits because you need to do it regularly, just like exercise. You know, you just can't do it. Once and then you know you get peeling and then you stop and then one week later you apply it again so that sort of defeats the purpose as well.、Um, yes,、yeah, so、you've got to choose something that is suitable for your skin that you can use on a regular basis to get the the benefit the full benefit. So I usually get patients to start、um, very slowly at the start. Like I'll even tell them to put it on for maybe fifteen or twenty minutes. Make sure they are not having an allergic reaction to start with, and then I'll、yes. say. That do an hour or two hours for the next day, and then maybe skip a day if you're finding you're a little bit pink. So don't let、mm-hmm. yourself really red stage because that means you've overdone it. And then really slowly build it up to overnight use. And once you've done it overnight, don't wear it for the next two nights, and then try again the night after that. I, like like you said, I agree with that completely. It's persistence that will deliver results. Yeah. You can't Once or twice, and the problem is, if people are really aggressive with it at the start, and then they get all those side effects, then they don't want to do it anymore.、Mm. Most patients assume they're having an allergic reaction to it, or it doesn't suit their skin. What I explain to them that's a really normal reaction if you overtreat it at the start. You just get to undertreat and then build it up very slowly. So for myself, I agree with you. I used to have the very similar kinds of reactions around my mouth, not around my eyes. But that redness and inflammation around my mouth had a bit of drying, and then I started mixing it with a bit of my night cream,、mm. and all to, of that to,、uh, dilute it down a bit. Basically, yeah, yeah. and yeah. I get rid of the skin. But I have combination slash dry skin, so that suits me. With someone who's、yeah. oil or acne prone, they might not be able to use that option. That's right. Yeah. Oh, and also the big warning with vitamin A with. Acne sufferers is that it can actually cause more flaring and a breakout because what vitamin A tries to do is it almost tries to detox and get rid of all the impurities. So、um, I always say to acne clients, if I can see a lot of blocked pores、um, under their skin, I would really encourage them to come in for a skin extraction、um, while they're starting vitamin A because unfortunately it's just going to push everything out. And without the extraction, they're going to think that the product is going to cause more pimples, but in actual fact, it's just trying to move it.、Um, so that's a big one.、Mm. That I, if you look at the oral forms of vitamin A, which are used for acne, they do exactly the same thing. First three months,、mm. I warn patients, you will actually see a worsening of your acne. That、yeah. means it's not working. That's exactly what it's meant to do at the start. Like you said, it's almost trying、mm. effect. So we'll get rid of all that extra sebum that you got trapped in in your pores, and then after three months, when your skin sort of renewed itself, that's when it gets better. So the other thing I recommend when people are doing when they're starting their vitamin A, they've got、um, a lot of acne or even pigment or any other problems they're using it for, I recommend they start with peels at the same time. So the peels、yeah. will constantly clarify their skin and their pores a little bit, and then they get even used to the vitamin A slowly as well. So I think both、yeah. things start. Really show a lot of improvement.、Mm. 
and the, and the, you have to actually unblock the pores. So if you see any sitting whiteheads or blackheads, so not to say like we shouldn't squeeze the inflamed stuff, like the inflamed pimples, because that's just going to cause trauma and scarring. But with people with acne, there's a fair amount of just sitting ducks there. Just wait. So I always say they're the ticking time bombs. They're going to become pimples if they're not removed. Um, and, you know, most skin care isn't physically going to remove a blackhead or a whitehead that's been sitting there for months. So you've got to be hands on and physically remove it as well as use the active product. So it's about breaking the cycle with acne. It's, you know, using products to prevent the formation of block pores, but get rid of what's already there. Um, yes, yeah, so that's the, the take home message for acne. So if you suffer from acne, don't just rely on the best product in the world to fix it. You've actually got to seek treatment as well. The other thing that we do is we do, you've heard of the carbon facials. Mm -hmm. So we do it with our Pico laser, which also, oh, yeah. so we apply a layer of carbon to the face. I mean, I, I've tried this myself and really clarifies your skin, makes really shiny. So the girls, mm. Well, they'll do the usual carbon facial using the Pico machine and then they'll do extractions as well because it just opens up all your pores that yeah. carbon and it just mm. cleans up. So I agree with you. I think that's really necessary sometimes. You can't rely yeah. on there alone and you can't sometimes even rely on peels alone. Sometimes mm. you do extractions. Yeah. Like yeah. I come across because I see this a lot with people with acne prone skin or oily skin. They have a lot of sebaceous hyperplasia. So they get a lot of little bumps on their forehead and that define it that's incredibly hard to treat because retinoic acid will, will will stop that from happening but the bumps they've already got take a long time to go away so how do you yeah. treat yeah so as i said you've got to start that process of extraction so our patients with very, uh, very blocked pores would actually be coming in every fortnight just to slowly slowly extract all those blocked pores because sometimes under those bumps the what comes out is quite firm and hard like a seed so um quite stubborn as well and so as they start using the active products as you said it starts that sort of peeling and opening up the pores so every time we see them it gets easier to extract that block pores because it can be quite tight and stuck um, the other thing is that uh, i and then this is something that i didn't learn at medical school and actually a lot of doctors don't know, but my father did t teach me this, is that if an acne patient presents to you with basically acne everywhere, especially just say older people that you don't expect, obviously they don't suffer from teenage acne, but if, and then you've got, you know, the females with the typical hormonal acne where it's just down in the chin. But if a female or a male, an older male or female has acne everywhere, um, always look in their hair because, um, because we treat so many hair and skin problems, they've usually got a head full of dandruff, which tells me that it's more like a fungal overgrowth. So fungus uh, skin conditions are actually very common and it can present itself as acne. Um, so I always sort of look at the hair and, and treat that as well because there's no point treating the face when the fungus is in the scalp because they're sleeping in it and rolling it at night. So you can't just treat one part. Um, and usually they actually have acne on the shoulders and back. So that tells me treat the hair as well. Um, and usually, because otherwise if you're just treating the face, it's always going to come back. At what point do you, I'm going to come back to the sleeping in that hair thing that you were talking about. Mm. A point that I tell all my patients. But um, at what point would you recommend Rakutane for someone? Um, yeah, to be honest, I've never had to. Um, I mean, I don't prescribe it. <clears throat> um, I've always made do with um, different strengths of topical vitamin A um, together with our acne treatments, which is we, we sort of fine tune our acne treatments depending on what's presented to us on the table. So if that person's presenting with more block pores, it's the extraction is the main part. Um, if it's scarring, obviously we move on to scarring treatments. So that could be anywhere between skin needling or laser treatment. Um, and then we combine the extractions with either microdermabrasion or chemical peeling. Just depends on the skin type. Um, mm. And also we consider downtime as well. Um, and then um, I rarely use antibiotics either. And I actually find I'm using more antifungals more than anything if I was to go medication. 
Mm. Uh, so if I correct the under, because I find um, acne people, especially if they've got the sensitive component as well, you've got to think fungus, mm. uh, especially if the, you find that they can't use anything, but they've got acne, they've got this sensitive skin. Um, and then you find the head full of dandruff. So I put them on medical medicated shampoo um, and then sometimes the antifungal tablet. But if it's not severe, I can usually manage most things topically. Yeah. But I think for me, the times that I would recommend patients maybe go on to the oral treatment, but only because I have that option. Of course, I work with a dermatologist. So it's very yeah. easy for me to say, yep, I'm going to get you to see Dr. Rich and maybe go on the Rakuten. Yes. Yeah have very generalized acne so it's on their back and their chest and things like that as mm -hmm. well for yeah. instance and for some people i mean um that's a really good point about hair i'll start looking at yeah that. look at the hair you'll be surprised what you do it and then whenever you ask the patient do you have dandruff they all say no okay they all don't but, realize so, yeah so you get in there with your gloves and you actually give their scalp a scratch yeah. and if you can elicit flaking that's inflammation so um, and then you ask them habits. So all of them will say, oh, yeah, I go to bed with wet hair. So that's a big one. And they don't wash their hair very often. So if people get fungus when, like I can imagine, look at like your hair, for example, right? If you washed your hair once in a blue moon and just waited for it to get really oily before you decide to wash it, fungus is going to brew there because it loves that moist, damp environment. Um, and then, you know, when you start getting acne, then you've got to, you know, okay, probably started in the hair. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, look in the hair. Yeah, and I think that's <laughs> when I'm going to talk to Dr. Rich about it too. Um, and then the other reason sometimes I'll get them to go on the Rakuten is most of my patients are usually very young. So I don't know if they'll actually stick to a really good topical regimen because they don't, yeah. they don't usually do that. Um, and yeah. a, lot of, a lot of boys. So, again, with women, I think... You can trust them to stick to a nighttime routine and, you know, wear sunscreen, etc. But with boys, I think it's a little bit hard, especially with the teenagers, for them to stick to those regimens. It's, I, I think it's quite hard for them. That's all right. Um, so so I, for them, I recommend that they yep. go. Yeah. Um, Usually the, um... And someone yep. that's extremely severe cystic acne, I recommend that they go on the Rakuten just to really work from the inside out. But I actually usually put them on for treatments at the same time. Because I think you've got to fight it from all fronts. At the moment with the Rakuten, we used to do really high doses back when I started. This was about 10 mm. years ago. But currently in the last few years, we stopped doing that. So we don't do the 40 to 60 milligrams. Sometimes we used to do 80 milligram doses, which was a very high dose. So if you compare it to the doses now, they're about 20 milligrams at the most. And for most people, they'll be on 10 milligrams and some even on 5 milligrams. Mm. And then you keep doing that for the next year or two it doesn't affect their liver function as much and it doesn't cause as many problems they'll just get a tiny bit of drying on the skin but we see the side effects less and less now that the dose has been lowered so much so because sometimes the, um, topical yeah so sometimes when that option is available and i know that the patient is a kind of patient i'm stick to a routine if i give it to them from a topical perspective then i just yeah. put them bracket in because i think they're better candidates for it the second yeah. thing i was I say to my patients, don't ever lie on your pillowcase twice. Mm -hmm. So change it. Yeah. I, because I say, and they say, well, I can't change my pillowcase every day. And I say, you don't have to. Your pillow is full size. Yeah. Flip yeah. it on the inside, then flip it upside down. And then flip mm -hmm. it. So I say, if, you, if you're sleeping on the same pillowcase every day, there's a lot of bacteria growing on it as well. And I, we know that P. acne is usually uh you know one of the bacteria that causes acne so you've got to have the right obviously environment for it to grow as well but we know that people who are acne sufferers tend to have an overgrowth of this bacteria so you're basically transferring it to this to this pillow and then you're lying on it again and not just that i think all the skincare you put on your face also gets transferred to your pillowcase i mean i see mm. mine okay yeah i yeah. definitely lie on it again and i think yeah. from the perspective of hair as well as you said Putting it, your hair is full of all kinds of oils, and there's so much yep. bacteria and all kinds right. of. Hair. <laughs> don't touch our faces yep. as much as touch our hair. If you think about mm. it, yep. the most common areas of bacteria are in human beings are our fingertips and our mouths. So our fingers are always touching our hair, especially with women. And I, I mean, I don't know about you, but I actually sleep with my hair out. I can't sleep with my hair tied up; it gives me a headache. Yeah. So my yeah. hair means I'm at times sleeping on my hair. Yeah. Do you know? So, so I think. 
important to not try not to sleep on your pillowcase over and over too many times yeah yeah as you said because skincare is like stale it becomes like stale food mm. <laughs> yeah probably just breeds more bacteria i mean it's yes <laughs> yeah but you know so what, um, it's I'll easy do stuff like this it's easy for, for me to get through to my female patients and get them to go oh yeah that makes sense i'm going to start doing that but my male patients forget about it they'll do it twice yeah. and again look if they if they if they're male and they're young you just got to talk to their mum <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah the mum one just the mum will do it <laughs> yeah because you have boys so you probably end up doing everything for them right well, that's right yeah i'm actually worried about one of them because one of my sons looks like my husband and my husband had very severe acne in at uni yeah yeah if only we dated then i i could have helped him yeah but... that's right <laughs> But a lot of these treatments as well uh Amanda is they really safe so you can use them for someone younger as well i mean especially with the topical treatments they're not going to disrupt yeah. them they're not going to do anything terrible to them if anything they're anti-aging so they'll always have better back and also yeah. because you're on the vitamin a you're going to make sure they're wearing a lot of sunscreen which well, means that's, that's right yeah yeah it it can make your skin very that would be the only thing is the sun sensitivity but look um yeah i'm i'm going to start digging at their faces if, whether they like it or not early <laughs> unfortunately <laughs> yeah well, they, they you need to squeeze it out and you know teenage acne it's full of um blackheads and whiteheads and but, you know obviously get them to wash their hair properly because who knows what they're going to be doing in the shower so you will be the you will be dr melvin pimple popper yeah <laughs> You know, I I used to do all the acne treatments um back in the day. Um and squeezing all that stuff was just so fun. And unfortunately that's been taken over by my dermal therapist. So I don't get to do all that fun stuff anymore. <laughs> Ilia for patients sometimes and that's really satisfying because they're never going to get them out by themselves, especially oh, yeah. for the eye yeah. area. I tell my patients don't use eye creams. That's I think right. and this is a question a patient actually sent me and said can you talk about eye i said to that i i said to my patients don't use eye creams just don't yeah. use eye creams. whatever cream i'm giving you whether it's your vitamin c or your retinoic acid or your retinal or retinol whatever you put that around your eyes if it's causing too much drying you mix it with a tiny bit of moisturizer mm-hmm. but eye creams i think the the area around the eye tends to get blocked a lot more quickly than anywhere else and yeah. the now so here the, this is where i find people end up with a lot of melia and they can't yeah. really very easily because the skin is so um delicate you can't and and this on around your orbit so if it's for instance if it's it's on yeah. on the eye, really hard hi alia thank you for joining us <laughs> hi alia um yeah especially the ones that are just above the eyelash very difficult um, yeah i'm glad you said that because i actually don't believe in eye cream either because i think you know it's just a part of the your face so whatever you're using there is good enough for your eye area but as you said certain things can be a bit too strong um but yeah you just go easy but i always say yeah use it on the eye area because most people are conscious about aging on the eyelids and under the eye so um and you know what i've started doing is i've because i now use the skin stamp as opposed to a roller for some reason i can't use roller and i think it's because it was, it does the more of the scratching um because you're rolling I, i actually break out into more of a hive reaction with the scratching um but i find the stamping is absolutely fine for me because i guess it's a cleaner um in and out um action um i actually stamp on my eyelids quite heavily now um you know with obviously with my eye closed but give it a good go on the top and i just pull down and get quite close to the lashes and then i put my active ingredients over the top after Mm. so we if a similar thing but with a laser so i'm really scared of putting putting thing on my face because you know with mm-hmm. the especially the subcontinental skin types you just got to be so careful i have the kind of skin and so does my daughter you can scratch us and it'll leave a mark dark yeah so i've just <laughs> got to be so careful i mean the the skin on my face heals a lot better than anywhere else on my body mm. up scarred on my face with scratches or if i've got the odd spot or whatever yeah. but on my body end of it scars so i've just got to be so careful so i don't like to do the rollers or any of the stamping or mm. anything 
what we started doing instead was Dr. Rich has an erbium laser and you know the erbium is used for resurfacing and it's like yeah. an laser. So when it's used at its, you know, at the higher energies, it actually takes a layer of skin off. So it's really good for Caucasian skin type, especially because it just removes all of those lines and wrinkles, and especially the really deep lines around the mouth. It can mm. remove on go. So it's, it's a really good treatment. But when you turn the energy right down, you can actually use it quite safely because it's, uh, it, it, it's, it's uh, from what I understand, it's actually quite safe for even darker skin types as long as the energy is low. So yeah. I don't have any behind it, to be honest, because Dr. Rich uses it more than I do. But mm -hmm. I it for my own skin. We started doing um, a microdermabrasion protocol with it. So if you go to a certain energy, it actually causes a little bit of drying of skin, a little bit of gridding, just like the radio frequency treatments. Yes. Without any needling. So you walk out of there looking a little bit red, and then you're pink mm -hmm. for a bit. And then you have a little bit of um, shedding of skin, but nowhere close to, you know, doing uh, on higher energies, obviously. So I've actually had a treatment two days ago. And you can't yeah. really... I have no gridding and I don't have uh, flake, too much flaking either. So I found that that's created so much tightness in my skin because it's an energy-based device as well. And it shrinks mm. pores. It's been amazing. Your skin starts to look like glass if you do a few of them. So I think when Did we you were... have to um, uh, wear eye shields? No, because I don't go over my eyelid, but okay. then take it down and then go under the eye as well. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean... I. I mean, we put eye shields on the patients if they are doing above their eyes, but I, mm. I, I'm doing above my eyes. I think it's fine. But under the eyes, I, they just pull the skin down and do it. And it's certainly, if you, want to get, if you wanted to get close, yeah, you can certainly use the internal shields as well. I'm sure Michael does that, but yeah. I, I'm not keen think, on it. Um, yeah, I mean, I think you're probably too young for the eye area yet, but I'm because just, the older age group, you know, they all want the eyes, which is why I actually like the skin needling as an option for most skin types um, because of the fact they're not laser. And um, and we go on top of the eyelids and right under the lash line. And, and because you can fine tune the depth of the needles during the treatment, you, you find that the whole face can get that same end point and, you know, during one session because I guess once you s set a reading with the laser you're sort of less inclined to change the settings up and down depending on where you are on the face do you know what I mean but um some people kind of would say oh I really want you to go quite heavily where I've got old acne scarring but of course you've got to tone it down for around the eye area so yeah so skin needling actually is quite popular in my clinic um and I find the downtime is quite little because um, you're not sort of peeling the skin. It's just basically you're causing those micro traumas. So, so I always say to people, look, laser and uh, needling, they're sort of the same thing. There's, there's so many ways to skin a cat and one's just physical and one's using a laser, but we're all trying to do the same thing. And, and that's to really push the skin to the point where it needs to repair itself. But all these modalities are done in a safe way to not overdo it yet. And that's why it's got to be done properly. And I think that's the most important point because mm -hmm. patients will buy a $2 derma roller from eBay and then they're telling me they're using it. And I, I, I'm, I'm saying to them, but how are you cleaning it? What are the needles? Mm -hmm. of? What is their you know, diameter? How big are they? Are, yeah. they? are they pulling your skin? Are they tugging your skin? Are they causing trauma on the face, which might actually get PIH from it or post-inflammatory yeah. hyperpigmentation? So it's just there's so many problems that can happen. So I think it's really mm. for people to, for patients to see a, an expert or someone who's been doing it for a long time and someone who can recommend how you turn the energy up and down in which areas it's safe to do yeah. that. Yeah, because, um, yeah, as you, as you say, like, um, you know, there's so many treatments out there, but there isn't one treatment for everyone. Everyone's got their favourites. And I always say in my clinic, you know, maybe try the few that I've recommended because then you can decide which one you want to do on, you know, moving forward. Cause you know, I can't say, I can say what my favorite one is, but um, you know, you've kind of got to try different things and, you know, cause patients are quite fussy, isn't it? Like, um, especially with downtime too. So certain um, treatments might be great, but just way too much downtime or not suitable for their lifestyle. So I think with me, most of my patients have uh, called in rich and said, can you please tell us about the erbium? Because that's what Dr. Afro does. So you'll probably, yeah. At what you patients want to do because you know mm. they 
look up to you and you're their doctor and they think well if the doctor thinks it's really great and that's the one I want to do yeah mm. yeah that's the thing yeah let's talk about um other sort of uh, skin active so how do you feel mm. about vitamin C um yeah vitamin C look i think vitamin C and you, you know is good i in the daytime it's important because you're it's all about combating the free radicals that you're exposed to in the environment so um you know obviously sunblock is really important to protect against uva and uvb rays but c and e as daytime actives um would be great to help um also protect the skin um so they're antioxidants um in terms of type yeah i mean like i think i mean i don't have much um i mean i have an opinion about l ascorbic acid so um i don't believe that's a great form of vitamin c only because it is sort of the most raw and active form of vitamin c but it's not readily absorbed by the skin being a water loving uh ingredient plus for enough for it to get into your skin for it to actually do anything you need high concentrations of it mm-hmm. and unfortunately that comes to the point where you get the stinging and the irritation so when people say oh you know i'm using a 30% ascorbic acid serum but yeah it has to be 30% for it to actually do something whereas um the other forms of vitamin C um which are more lipophilic so more fat loving um you get away with smaller concentrations for it to actually do the same thing uh without causing the irritation um so what about you what's your opinion yeah no i agree with you completely and then with the ascorbic acid you got to stabilize it as well i mean these mm. The other thing that people have to understand is that retinoic acid, vitamin C, these um active products uh they actually degrade really easily. So as yeah. soon as you the air or to the sunlight or any light, they start degrading straight away. So I actually tell all my patients to put them away in the darkest cover they've got in the bathroom. Mm. And you know, and yeah. as well especially in summer, but you've got to be very careful about the degradation. Mm. You've got to so Personally the product that I really liked I mean we have a vitamin C at Enrich as well um and that's a really nice product as well but personally I really love the skin suticals uh ferulic acid that's the ideal concentration I I believe and it's also the ideal composition of what vitamin C should be and it doesn't degrade and they put it in a really nice dark bottle so not exposed to the light either mm-hmm. um, I think Alia actually was talking about it the other day when we did a live chat and she actually did this little experiment I don't know if you saw it. Oh she, yeah, I did. On the apple. The apple that was really yeah. great. Yeah, that, that was, was cool. cool. Yeah, I've yeah. never thought of like putting it on food. <laughs> I, yeah. I really like acid every day I'm not using mm. it. But I think I think it is a good composition, but you could go a little bit harder if you thought it wasn't challenging your skin enough in that in that way. So I was going to yeah. ask you magic sprinkles tell me a little bit more about that oh <laughs> well that was more a, okay a lockdown project of mine um know. the magic sprinkles so essentially what happened was my brother was going through stuff in our lab and then found this um a scorbel palmitate powder and back in the day we used to grind this powder and mix it with vitamin E into I I think it was grape seed oil but it was really good for post treatments and people with more dermatitis and you know irritating type inflammatory uh skin um and I remember I used to love it so any time after a treatment if I used it my skin will repair really quickly um and then of course I don't know we've just forgot about that product for a while and then he dug up this powder so I took it home and I decided you know what am I going to do with this thing so I started playing around and pinch, putting pinches in my night cream and um almost you know you know for fun just making my skin care even more active so i thought well that's kind of fun and um you know that you can be in control of what you can add to your skin care so i decided to yeah bring out the queen of collagen's magic sprinkles which is essentially just more of a fun thing um i'll show you a bottle here cuz i actually haven't got my act together i've i've bottled them but i actually haven't wow um, started it stuff yet can you put it so, a bit a bit closer to the screen amanda so oh, we can yes. yeah yeah go right in oh that looks beautiful i like the color like the color <laughs> it's yeah. a bit like um yeah a bit bewitched inspired by bewitched <laughs> 
So, I, yeah, so I, since then I bought a new batch of powder. And look, a scorpel palmitate is actually very, very stable. Um, it's actually so stable that it doesn't combine well in a jar or in a serum with other ingredients because it's stability. So it's actually probably better in its raw form. Um, and look, my night cream is quite... Um, rich like it's a lot of it my my base of my night moisturizers got emu oil and um different oils as well that are more anti-inflammatory and healing so when i put a pinch of that into my night uh cream it actually melts in really well um and i've been just doing that as the last step before i go to bed but i also use a vitamin c serum in the day i find um i like something lighter in the day because then you've got makeup on top but nighttime, I kind of tend to yeah hydrate and use a bit more richer things. And I yeah, so Alia wants some magic sprinkles too. And Ali, I know. Yes, I know. She, yeah, I have spoken to her about it. I will. I will send the magic sprinkles to you guys. <laughs> Share the sprinkles around. Yeah, I just thought. Look, it, it's a nice time because I know this lockdown and well. Most of us are in Mel uh, Victoria, but, you know, it's all about, I think this second lockdown is all about looking after yourself and really taking more time to, you know, look at yourself, you know, in terms of being healthy um, mentally as well, um, because we're all going to have to get back to the real world soon. And to be honest, you know, I'm kind of not looking forward to the whole school drop off and all that. <laughs> um, and, you know, I think it's, you know, it's okay to think about yourself during this time because um, it's a mental battle. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. And I think I, what, from what I've had from most patients is they felt really low during this time and then they end up looking themselves in a more negative light and picking on their mm. flaws or their, you know, imagined flaws sometimes, not even real yeah. flaws. And then it just ends up building out of proportion and th that's all they can focus on. So even... Mm. In their hair something simple like that the fact that they can't do it is really affecting people so yeah. i think all the things that you can do for yourself at home at least that makes you feel a little bit better but yeah. the, the most um uh popular treatment during this time as soon as we reopened and before we shut down as well were the can you can you guess which one it was as in um treatments that we provide patients yeah 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 for us yeah. For us, fat dissolving. Oh, fat dissolving. Oh, dear. <laughs> the problem, body or face? Face, face. Because the, the problem, face. body, you can hide at any time. But <laughs> the hardest thing is going through the downtime. Yeah, oh, that's true. Yes, because you can look like the nutty professor. It doesn't matter. And now you're behind a mask. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's so true. That's so true. Actually, yeah, that's a big one. And now, you know what? I, I don't care about bruising. I'm like, it doesn't matter. <laughs> I didn't want to do anything like today or yesterday because I was like, I've got my life chat. But tomorrow, I don't care anymore. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we are very lucky, Amanda, that we've actually managed to keep doing things to ourselves. And I say to my patients, I feel really bad for you because if I yeah. was in a situation where I couldn't do my anti-wrinkles or my treatments, I'd, I'd actually feel pretty down. I think just yeah. the fact that I haven't had access to my usual laser treatments has made me feel really low because I'm yeah. like, I can't get back to that. So I can, I can understand. I can understand it's been really hard for people. Yeah, that's right. Because it's a real break in their usual routine, you know, whether that be getting your nails done and your lashes done and all that sort of thing. So, yeah. You mentioned you use a serum in the morning with the vitamin C. Can I ask you what, what you use? If you don't mind. Um, um, yeah, at the moment I'm using uh, one of our Bioscore C serum, which is um, a magnesium ascorbyl um, um, phosphate uh, type of vitamin C um, at the moment. And then I'm using, um, I think it's the Intraceuticals um, HA hyaluronic acid gel. I find that is nice to sort of put on in the morning because I just feel more awake when I put it on because it's quite, quite refreshing. Um, and then I use our Bioscore Sunblock, which is really nice because it's SPF 30. So it just sits at 30. It's not plus because I find with um, SPF, I, I guess the higher you go, the thicker the cream and the less, the more icky it feels. So our 
um, buy score sunblock feels really nice, just like a, a day cream. It doesn't feel greasy or oily. Um, so even um, men clients like to use that. Um, and then, yeah, I always find with, if you're not going to be sunbathing, which not many people do these days, you don't have to go overkill with the SPF protection. Mm. Um, unless you live in Asia and you're just like, they're really just scared of any sunlight. So, um, I saw a video of an Asian doctor the other day, which was, which was hilarious. She's so cute. She's Sydney based and she just, I think she went out on the street to get something. She had gloves on, she had a sun umbrella and she oh, had, yeah. well, I was like, that, that is so, such an Asian thing to do. Because yes. Yep. <laughs> I used to go out yeah. and I would say, cover your hands, cover your hands. Like, yeah, yeah. So, so my, um, my grandmother in Malaysia, she's passed away, bless her, but she always had a shirt in the car and would put it on backwards and have the sleeves covering her hands when she drove. Like, that's actually quite a good idea. Yeah, absolutely. Because, because yeah. I think people forget that your hands can actually sometimes betray your real age if you're not looking yeah. after only looking after your face. So there's so many patients I find when they come and see me, the skin on their faces, they've actually managed mm -hmm. to be really nice. And, you know, they've looked after it. They've done treatments. They've been wearing sunscreen. They've forgotten about their necks. They've forgotten about yeah. their chest. They've forgotten about their hands. And mm -hmm. especially I find a lot of patients will spray perfume on their necks. Then they go out in the sun and they don't understand the reaction with the alcohol and the skin. Yeah causes that really severe aging to the skin. It causes a lot of dermatitis and it yes. almost becomes really leathery. And then mm. it's free. So I've, I've actually been putting a lot of dermal filler through the skin for some of these patients and that helps. Yeah. But of course there's a lot of inflammation and redness as well. Then they need laser treatment, etc. So that's another, I think, pearl of wisdom for patients if they're watching this. Don't spray perfume on exposed parts of your body. Yeah, yeah. Many so I actually spray back uh, back in my hair <laughs> up here yeah wrist and then i rub mm. that clothes, and then i'll do the parisian thing the way you're meant to wear perfume you spray it in the air you walk through it oh you walk through it oh uh, yeah my friend down um, at high school taught me about that one yeah <laughs> yeah that's so, a good idea i think it's also important about to know about things uh, about things that you shouldn't be doing and i agree yeah. with you the uh, sunscreen um, issue, I think, is a big issue for most people. As you say, mm -hmm. it goes up. Sometimes the concentrations can become quite thick as well. So I've um, I've been using a La Roche, the La Roche brand. We stock them as well, but they've got an ultra light, and now they've just come out with an ultra ultra light. So the ultra oh. light, it was really really thin. If you put it on your skin, it just disappeared. And then they had a tinted version, which was really nice. It didn't even look white. And now they've mm -hmm. come. Out Ultra light, and I can't wait to try that because I because I use the ultra light at the moment. Yeah, because it's a lot nicer than the thicker versions. I agree with you. Mm. And I think and, the um, things you've talked about, the order in which you use things, I do exactly the same thing. So my yeah. active ingredient, which is my vitamin C serum, which I'm using the skin circles one at the moment, I put that on first, and then yeah. I'll take the HA on because I do tend to get a bit of dryness. Then my sunscreen, and then I'll 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 actually leave a couple of minutes between each application yeah. so I, all gets really absorbed into the skin and mm. then and, yeah. I, and then makeup one is last us is talking about how their hands are so um old so oh. of course now a lot of sun exposure lots of sun exposure especially in queen like queensland felicity mm. you, you'll know that this happens quite a lot but the good yeah. thing is really reversible so a lot of my patients their main problems are skin quality and pigment on their hands and the pigment can be treated with laser treatments and the skin quality can definitely be improved with filler. So dermal yeah. filler is really, really fantastic because it kickstarts your own collagen as well. Yeah. And it actually does collagen stimulating um, injections, which are slightly different to the dermal mm -hmm. filler that I do, but they're both doing essentially the same thing, except just in different ways. But there's definitely yeah. get the skin working harder again, making some more collagen and regenerating itself really. Yeah, yeah. So I, I definitely recommend, obviously, protecting your hands from the sun. But usually, the patients that present to us, it's already too late. The damage is done. So yeah, I, I do inject collagen stimulating injectables in the hands, and I actually inject it in the neck and décolletage, and that works quite well. Um, yeah, and don't forget when you're putting your creams on your face, extend it down to your neck and behind the neck, 
because the neck is an area that's not very forgiving. It's very thin. And when it ages, actually, it's very hard to reverse. Um, even plastic surgeons struggle with the neck lift procedure. It's actually a very difficult procedure and not many people are actually good candidates for that. So you, you can't just think chopping out skin and pulling it back is the answer. So, you know, you really have to take the active back behind. Yeah. Especially um, for, I mean, women are protected because especially like women like me who have been there all the time. Yeah. But there's a little bit of protection, but men especially um, tend mm -hmm. to get a lot of sun damage at the back of their necks. And um, I don't know if you read Alia's comment, but she's putting it on a bum as well. So a bum. Uh, Alia's priorities are very well placed. Oh. <laughs> That's good to know. Unfortunately, some of my stuff doesn't spread that well. It's even hard for me to get it onto my hands. <laughs> um, vitamin C does she have? <laughs> Um, you know, I was going to say, oh, actually, a, t a topic that is probably going to have to be on a separate chat is um, m the serum that I'm using at night is a growth factor serum. Oh. Yeah. So I actually had introduced that into my skin regime a few years ago now. So that's the first thing I put on after I come out from washing my face and in the shower is this particular growth factor serum. And it's so specialized that there's over 600 growth factors in that product. Yeah. So have you so, formulated it, Amanda? Um, we actually have, uh, what do you call it, sourced from a lab um, okay. that makes this product um, and they private label. Um, wow. There's no way I could make this thing on my own because the growth factors are actually from human stem cells and fibroblasts. Wow. So this lab has sourced um, these cells from um, a certified lab and they're actually uh, growing the cells to secrete these growth factors to actually bottle these growth factors in a serum. Um, and they've actually shown that they not only proliferate fibroblasts in neonatal skin, but they've actually shown to suppress skin cancer activity like in a lab. So. Wow. So not only be able to grow healthy skin, but prevent um, skin cancer. Yeah. But, that, but reading the information on that product, that's a whole, like almost a whole lecture. <laughs> okay, this is a nice teaser for our next chat. Yeah, yeah. But um, because I knew we were going to talk about skin care and I really didn't know where it was going to lead. So I thought, well, I may as well research a bit more of what I'm using because you're probably going to ask me what I'm using. And that alone, that serum, I think um, the, the lady that I talked to, she gave me all this information and there's just so much research with this particular serum. Yeah. So when we come back, maybe we can chat about that. Um, yeah. Chat more about hyaluronic acid as well because there's hyaluronic acid and then there's hyaluronic acid. Um, yeah. I'm talking care, of course. So we could chat about things like that as well. And um, I, I thought we could get you to talk a little bit more, maybe a little bit more about your collagen stimulating stuff as well, because I know you're so passionate about it. Yeah. So I chat about that a bit more. And we could also maybe, if people are interested, um, talk about the difference between dermal filler and collagen stimulating injections, because they're both two, like, uh, two yeah. different, two um, different things. Yeah. Just from someone, what's the name of the serum, please? Um, so uh, uh, is that oh, maybe the one that I'm talking about? Uh, maybe it's yeah, a uh, yeah, because we we've private labelled the product. So in our clinic, it's called the S Factor Serum, um, and our company is called Bioscore International. So if you look up on our website, www.bioscore b i o s c o r dot com dot a u, you can see the range there. But yeah, that that serum is um really on another level. Um, so is this yeah. something available? people to purchase online or do they have to see you so you can recommend what this um, it's actually not a prescription product so i don't necessarily have to see them so they can call up and order yeah yeah, yeah. um we we're actually working on the online store um at the moment yeah just because you know it's going to be easy in the long run for and people to order stuff yeah everyone will want a part of the magic sprinkles as well yeah, so I will bring that out when I get my act together. But 
um, yes, though, that will be available soon. And yeah, as I said, it's just a bit of fun because you can play with your skincare. You can add as much as you want, um, see what it combines well with. And then, yeah, just the more, the better. Well, we, we might wrap up here because um, Instagram only allows you to do this for an hour and I don't want to okay. do it. Um, thank you so much for joining us today, Amanda. And that was such a great chat. We didn't even have any questions and I couldn't stop talking. Uh, yeah. I'm not, yeah, I'm sure there might be questions coming out from this so we can follow it up with another chat. And there's so much that we haven't even touched on yet. So we'll definitely come back and do this in another couple of weeks. Thank you so much for your mm. time. And have a great yeah, day. Thank you. Thanks, and Dr. Asha. And I'll chat to you soon. Yeah, I'll have to catch up soon. Definitely. Um, look out for the sprinkles. I'll send some to you. <laughs> All right, take care. Bye.